In the previous video, we learned about the getByRole query to find elements by their roles. Now, as it turns out, the getByRole method accepts a few options that we can use to tweak the querying logic. Two of them are very important to know as a beginner, so let's understand what they are with examples. At the moment, in our application component, we have an input, a select dropdown, a checkbox, and a submit button. Let's now add a text area form control. I'm going to copy paste the HTML code. Now, if we save the file, all of a sudden our test fails. If I scroll up in the terminal, we see the error message. Found multiple elements with the role text box. And this is because the default role for both input of type text and a text area is text box. So how do we resolve this issue where we have multiple elements that have the same role? After all, get by role will throw an error if it finds multiple elements with the given role. Well, this is where our first option comes into picture. And that is the name option. Let's see how to add it to our test. In application.test.tsx, we can add a second argument to get by role, which is the options object. On line seven, where we get by role a text box, add an empty object. In this object, we can specify a key value pair. The key is name, and the value is the accessible name for the element. The accessible name is for simple cases equal to one, the label of a form element, two, the text content of a button, or three, the value of the aria label attribute. Back in our application component, we can see the input component has a label with the text name. And this will be our value to the name option in our test. String name. Save the file and our test passes. We are able to verify that the input component has been rendered by our application component. Let's make sure it is the same with the newly added text area as well. Const bio element. Since bio is what we are capturing, is going to be equal to screen dot get by role text box and we specify the name option to bio. Bio is the label for our text area. In the next line, expect bio element to be in the document. Save the file and our test continues to pass. Now the name option is case sensitive if you specify a string, so please make sure to pay attention to that. Lowercase bio will cause the test to fail. All right, let's take a look at our second option, which is the level option. And this is applicable when dealing with headings. Back in application.tsx, let me first add some code in the application component to set the stage. I'm going to wrap the form component with react fragment. And just before the form element, I'm going to add two headings. An h1 tag that says job application form. And an h2 tag that says section one. The text could be anything, so don't worry if it doesn't make much sense. Now we want to ensure that the user sees both these headings in the UI, which means we need to ensure both are present in the virtual DOM in our test. Let's head to the test file and expect that. Cool. 
const page heading is equal to screen dot get by role heading. Expect page heading to be in the document. But as soon as we save the file, we see an error. Found multiple elements with the role heading. This is because all heading elements, h1 to h6, have the same role of heading. Luckily for us, we have just learned how to fix this error using the name option. So add name job application form. If we now save the file, our test passes. Let's ensure the section heading element also is present in the DOM. Const section heading is equal to screen dot get by role heading and name is section one which is the text for our h2 tag. In the next line, expect section heading to be in the document. Save the file and the test passes. Now, although this works great, we want to ensure that the two heading elements are of different levels. We want to make sure the page heading is an h1 element and the section heading is an h2 element. To address this concern, React Testing Library provides us with a level option that is specific to the heading role. So instead of using name for page heading, we're going to specify level one and for the section heading, level 2. Here level corresponds to h1 and h2 and can go all the way till a value of 6. If I save the file, the test still passes. But now we are confident that an h1 level heading and an h2 level heading are present in the UI. Now apart from the two options we have explored, there are a few more options that we can use with the get by role query. I've listed them down here, but please go through the documentation for more information about each of them. The docs should help you understand what is the purpose of each of these options. But this is about passing options to the get by role method. The second argument is an object which can contain one or more options. They're helpful when you have multiple elements with the same role. You can pass options like name, which is usually the label or the inner text, and level for elements with role heading. You also have options like checked, selected, and so on. Now let me tell you, the get by role method should be your top preference for just about everything. If for some reason it doesn't work well with your component code, you can make use of one of the other queries. Let's take a look at the second query method in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.